All right. Thank you all for virtually attending the Neighborhood Artistic Feature public meeting for the Argyle Station. My name is Jamie Burkhart, and I will be the moderator this evening. And before we get started, I'd like to run through a few items. As you can see, we have live ASL interpretation this evening. We will also be recording this meeting to share on the project's website, so you can refer back to it or share with others. We will have a presentation and then an open engagement session in which we invite you to share your ideas for the neighborhood artistic feature that will appear on the outside of the Argyle station. If you have a question or comment during the presentation, please write it in the chat box. We will, re we will be recording all questions and comments for review and consideration as it relates to the neighborhood artistic feature for the station. Please note that we will only be focusing on the artistic feature this evening. And if you have construction related questions, please email us at rpm at transitchicago.com. Before we begin, I'd like to also thank the 46th and 48th Ward for their continued support on this project. And now I'd like to hand it off to Stephanie Cavazos to kick off the meeting. Hey there, thanks, Jamie. Um, as mentioned, my name is Stephanie Cavazos, and I work in communications on the outreach team for the Red and Purple Modernization Project. Um, we're really excited to begin our workshop tonight. We're creating new artistic features for the Argyle Station, and that's going to open in 2025. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about the RPM project and what's been going on with construction, as well as a quick overview of what the new stations will look like once the project is complete. We're also going to discuss what neighborhood identifiers are and what we're hoping to accomplish through tonight's workshop. Then we'll move into the exciting part. Ink Factory will listen to your ideas and draw real-time visual notes and illustrations of your brainstorming as we talk through what your station means to you and your community. And then lastly, we'll open the floor for some Q&A before we wrap up. Okay, next slide, please. So to recap, uh, the RPM phase one project, it includes three areas of work, the Lawrence to Bryn Mawr modernization project, the red purple bypass area, and the corridor signal improvement project. So as I'm sure you're familiar with, um, the Lawrence to Bryn Mawr modernization project consists of a complete rebuild of the Lawrence, Argyle, Berwyn, and Bryn Mawr stations, which is gonna make them fully ADA accessible. And that also includes the rebuild of the adjacent tracks and the support structures through the 1.3 mile footprint. This also now includes the removal of the 100 year old embankment wall from Leland to Ardmore. You just saw last month the switch to stage B, which marked the halfway point of this project, and the expected completion is in 2025. So it also includes, um, the RPM project also includes the red-purple bypass project area, um, and that includes the bypass structure, which carries brown line trains over red and purple line tracks just north of the Belmont station, and that went into service in November 2021. And then that was followed by the start of red and purple line track structure rebuild uh, between Belmont and Addison stations. So that began in early 2022, and then that also has an expected completion in 2025. Um, and then lastly, but also super important is the complete upgrade of the 50-year-old track signal system between Howard and Belmont. This is going to help CTA improve train operations and service reliability through the entire system. There's a lot of different um, parts of the RPM project um, that are, you know, moving throughout the city. And so uh, I, I want to now turn it over to Emily Ryan, um, who's the RPM project manager, specifically for the new stations, which is what we're talking about tonight. She's going to talk about what those will look like in the future, what a neighborhood identifier is, and then how these are going to appear in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Hello, Argyle community. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, my name is Emily Ryan. I'm CTA's uh, construction project manager for the Red and Purple Line Modern Our Nation project. Um, tonight, I'm going to go over what a neighborhood identifier is. So each station house, the Lawrence, Argyle, Berwyn, and Bryn Mawr stations will feature a unique identifier art artistic element. These identifiers, with your help, will represent the neighborhood and enhance the stations for your community. The identifiers are in addition to and separate from previously announced artwork for each of the new stations. Next slide, please. Um, I'm gonna go uh, pretty briefly over the um, other ones that aren't 
Argyle. So the, that was Lawrence Main, um, the the Lawrence Auxiliary exit. And then now we're going to Argyle. So for you tonight, what we're going to be focusing on is creating um, something that is unique and identifies your community and put the, putting them in these two um, uh, rectangles that are outlined with red and have a white uh, center. So on the right and left, they'll be both in the main Argyle entrance. They will also be in addition to um, the Argyle secondary exit right there. Um, the two squares again, um, uh, outlined in red with the, the white square in the middle. So those are going to be the locations for your uh, community station identifier, artistic element. And then we're gonna flip through pretty fast the, um, the Berwyn main, Berwyn secondary exit, Bryn Mawr main entrance, Bryn Mawr secondary exit, exit and then Bryn Mawr Hollywood. So next slide, please. Um, the design process and timeline for these um, artistic elements is as follows. Tonight, we're getting your input. So um, please be as vocal as you can and give us all the ideas um, that are, are going through you and what represent your community to you. It will then get um, go through design development, uh, which will begin this winter um, and, and go through the winter into 2025. Um, the, it will be, the design will be refined in the spring and then the design will be um, begin its fabrication in the summer of 2024. And then um, we look forward to the installation in 2025. Slide please. Now I will turn it over to Jamie um, to give you a little more background into uh, Ink Factory and what we're gonna be doing tonight. Thank you, Emily. Um, I'd like to introduce Ink Factory. Uh, Ink Factory is a team of artists who help organizations such as us this evening communicate visually. They are here tonight to listen, filter, and synthesize the ideas that you share into drawings called visual notes. The artists draw in real time to capture your thoughts and ideas. Tonight, we have Wally joining us from Ink Factory to create the live visual notes. In real time, Wally will be turning your ideas and words into images and text to visually represent the key concepts and themes from this open conversation. In the end, the visual notes will be used to create an illustration that will be turned into a fabricated metal installation for the new Argyle station. Before we begin opening up the conversation, I'm going to read through the prompts to help spark ideas for you to share with Wally, similar to those that you were prompted when you registered for this evening. Once I read through them, we will open up the conversation to you all. To share your thoughts, we ask that you raise your hand by clicking the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. We will then call on individuals in the order they appear on our screen to share their thoughts. Once called upon, there will be a prompt on your screen that appears um, asking you to unmute. And at that point, you can please unmute yourself to share your ideas. We may ask a few follow-up questions to continue the engagement, really looking for those visual components. And once you've completed sharing your thoughts, we will move on to the next individual to share, to share theirs. If you are not comfortable raising your hand or speaking in public, that's okay. Feel free to voice your questions or thoughts um, or any visuals that you'd like to share in the chat or Q&A box. So as you see, we have the prompts on screen. Um, so when you think about the neighborhood around Argyle, the Argyle station, what do you think of? What are some places or attractions that define this neighborhood? And what does the community name Uptown mean to you? And what are some of the ideas, guidelines, or images that artists should consider for your neighborhood identifier? And at this point, I, I ask that you please raise your hand and we can start hearing your ideas. We have a question in the Q&A, Jamie, do you see it? Oh, thank you for your question, Michael. Um, so will the same design be used in all four spaces? 
Um, no. So we actually have this meeting for each of the stations. We actually just had Lawrence uh, just before this Argyle meeting. So this meeting specifically is for Argyle. And each of these meetings will be pulling these ideas. And as I said, Wally will be taking visual notes uh, representing Ink Factory that will be turned into an artistic feature that will be installed at each of the stations. Um, so Lawrence might have one representation, Argyle might have others, Berwyn and Bryn Mawr. I hope that answered your question. Um, I see that Dan Pellant has their hand raised. If we can unmute Dan. Hi, yeah. Um... Well, I was just going to say that we already have a kind of a the, the night market has kind of done a little kind of done a little bit of branding um, of the neighborhood or done of the lanterns and all that. So something that kind of ties together with what's already exists might or has already been done as far as events in the neighborhood might be a good good starting point. Awesome. So Dan, I heard you say the lanterns that the, the night market branding uses. Is there any other visuals um, from the Argyle night market that that might be a good idea for the artist to include when thinking about creating this unique identifier? Um, honestly, the streetscape actually would be a great, it would be another one to incorporate there. I think that would go just how, how we you can look out from the down down Argyle and you see the tents kind of set up and then the, in the distance especially at, when the sun's coming down it's absolutely just an absolutely beautiful uh, scene of all the people. Wonderful, thank you, Dan. Um, so I see Michael uh, had a follow-up question. Um, there are four spaces at the Argyle station. Will all four of those be the same? Um, thank you for that follow-up question. I will turn that over to Emily Ryan, who can better answer that question. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, right now, it is that each station will have its own station identifier that will be in all of the it will be the same identifier in all of um, the designated locations. Those locations are designated, um, allocated for this. Think of it almost as um, bookends for the station. It's it's um, a way to keep it consistent and um, help people orient themselves to that specific station. So we don't want a different identifier or a different piece of artwork in um, at each location within a station, if that clarifies it. So it's going to be one identifier in multiple locations for each station. Thank you, Emily. I see that Stormy Kara has their hand raised. If we can please allow Stormy to unmute. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm a recent, uh, <clears throat> I recently moved to this neighborhood and I've already gotten a great sense of kind of what this neighborhood is all about. Um, and I say mainly multiculturalism, um, especially, you know, if we have Asia on Argyle, uh, we have the Pagoda, we have all these um, Asian restaurants, stores, everything like that. But we also have this Chilean place, we have this Venezuelan place, you know, we have this wide range of, of cultures here. And so, I, yeah, so I think, and especially what um, the past speaker said about the, the night market, um, you know, that's a major event that we have during the summer, and it's a great way to showcase kind of this multiculturalism that we have here in this in this neighborhood. So I think taking those into account um, would be would be good for for the identifier. Stormy, you're the second person who's brought up um, the Argyle Night Market. Do you mind explaining that a little bit more visually for the artists so they understand all the components of the Night Market? Yeah, so the Night Market, obviously, we have the lanterns out. We have these tables of different uh, storefronts, you know, pretty much everything you could want. Remember, there's like, uh, you, you could get coffee, you could get journals you could get shirts candles just this whole range of things uh, there's live music um you know flags food trucks it's, it's a very a very nice and diverse 
market area and kind of destination for people to go to every Thursday during the summer. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I see that Derek Limaseth has their hand raised. If we can please allow Derek to unmute. Hey, thank you. Uh, so, you know, one of the uh, items that I'm very sad to see go as part of the Argyle uh, reconstruction is the pagoda on top of the station. Um, you know, that that's a very unique element to a CTA stop. And I, you know, would love if somehow that carried on, uh, maybe not exactly uh, visually identical, but in spirit, you know, the, the red and green pagoda on top of the station it would be uh, great to have that maybe kind of carried in the design somehow. Thank you, Derek. Um, so the visual components of, of the Pagoda, if we can perhaps incorporate that in some way. Um, I do see Elizabeth Amon uh, wrote in the Q&A, um, places and attractions that define the area, the night market, San Hua, which is a restaurant, uh, Green Mill, which is a jazz club, uh, Chinese Kung Fu Foshan Lion dance mascot, costume lanterns. So I think uh, a little bit more representation of, of the cultures in the community. I see that Michael Danhauser has his hand raised. If we can allow Michael to unmute, please. Uh, piggybacking on some of the things that have been said, I think it's very important that we emphasize that it's multicultural. So I'm kind of against reinstating the pagoda, which only sort of represents the Asian community. You know, you have the Jewish community, you have the gay community, you have all sorts of things going on. And it also, the station serves more than Argyle Street, but the whole uptown area. So I think it needs to be very broad, not very narrow. Awesome. So other communities that you pointed out, the Jewish community, the LGBTQIA plus community, uh, making sure that they're represented in, in what is being created. Thank you. Any other visuals that you, you perhaps want to add? I see that you've gone off um, on mute. So I'm not sure if you're speaking or if you would like to add, um, but please feel free to unmute if you do have any other visuals to add. Otherwise, yeah, what, oh, what sorry, thought go ahead. Is, sorry, I goofed up on the technology. No worries. Um, I think, you know, we could almost use the New York system as an example where maybe it's generic. You know, it's some form of a stylized A for Argyle, stylized U for Uptown. You know, something very generic, but still represents the station, because I think, you know, to try to incorporate everything that Uptown is in that small space, otherwise may be a mishmash. Now I'm through, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I see that Marco Mendoza has their hand raised. If we can please unmute Marco. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Marco Mendoza. Um, <laughs> so I was hearing everyone talk and actually a few ideas that I wanted to mention have already been spoken about like things like the Green Mill, for example, um, and the whole multicultural thing going on. I think that's wonderful. Uh, I also would say that there is a lot of, we have a lot of like mural street art uh, within the actual neighborhood. And every time I'm walking by or I'm in the neighborhood, which, you know, I live there. <laughs> Um, it's really nice to see all that. So maybe drawing some inspiration from that or possibly asking even like reaching out to local artists who have actually left their mark on Argyle would be a great idea, uh, could give their own inspiration as to how they believe um, the community or the, the town that we have should be represented. Um, as well as, I guess this is the fall more of the Q&A thing, but uh, I myself am a graphic designer and would be more than willing to lend a hand if uh, that's possible. And I just think, uh, you know, it would be, be good for community involvement to be um, shown throughout the piece, if possible. 
I'm not sure about um, the involvement beyond this evening, um, but if somebody wanted to, to jump in at that point, but I wanted to dig a little bit more about the, the art that you're seeing um, throughout the community. If there are any visuals that really stand out to you that you'd like to see um, pulled into the design element of this artistic feature. Oh, there is a lot of beautiful graffiti that is, um, that is over. Um, so when you go into that same area that has all the different like independently owned restaurants, and businesses, uh, throughout the alleyways, you can see all this beautiful art that's been commissioned on the side of these buildings. And it's something that really speaks to, like, it's, it's an homage to the community, which um, really, I feel, deserves to be included into that. Um, whether or not it's like small references to the pieces that are there or it's the stylistic attributes that are implied in the piece. But um, there's a lot of them. And if you just even just go down the street once, you can see at least five. They're very prominent and very hard to miss. Wonderful. Thank you. Hi, Jamie. Yes. This is Emily Ryan. Um, Hi again. Did I, uh, his name was Sean. I'm sorry. Marco. Just, Marco. Oh, Marco. I, I apologize. Marco. Um, at the end of this presentation, there will be multiple um, commu communication facets. If you are more comfortable or if you can express your ideas um, better visually, that would be um, one way to, um, to do so. So although Ink Factory is going to be the, um, the artist for these um, station identifiers, feel free um, to put your thoughts visually um, and send them via email if you, you know, that, that way, if you are comfortable. Um, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I would actually be more than happy to go down and take some pictures of the artists, um, uh, artists take some pictures of the artwork um, and then give you their handles if possible, because I feel like that, that's a great step in the right direction. I'd be more than happy to email you whatever it would need to help complete the project. I mean, Marco, that that would, if you, like, again, if you have examples of the graffiti, um, it that is that is your outlet, that, that's your facet to give us your, your ideas for this. So please feel absolutely free to do so. so thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Marco. I see that Richard has their hand up. If we could please ask Richard to unmute. Hi. So similar to what the previous person said about murals, there is one mural that comes to mind and it's called Roots of Argyle. It's on Argyle and Winthrop and that building will be redeveloped. So I think it would be nice if there could be a reference to even that mural because it's a popular one and it's large and a lot of people know it. And because that building will be redeveloped, so that mural will be lost. So I think with that in mind, it would be nice if even um, the artist who is creating this visualization is able to go to Argyle and be inspired themselves beyond this session today where we're just voicing our ideas. I think it's nice to pick up on cues along Argyle Street because um, previously someone mentioned the Green Mill, but then it seems that Lawrence would have its own visualization. So I think I would like for this to be specific to Argyle. Richard, do you mind describing that mural you're speaking of just a little bit more in depth so the artists might um, get some inspiration? Um, and we would encourage them to also, you know, check out the street, of course, um, but any sort of like components that really stand out to you that you want to incorporate or would like to see incorporated. Well, the mural has people within the neighborhood walking along the street, but then it also depicts people shopping in the grocery store since there are a number of grocery stores in the area. I think Business is what comes to mind when I think of Argyle and even walking along Argyle. So having a depiction of people is possible. It's even possible to depict language if the artist is interested in depicting some kind of text if they want to go that route. Um, so those are some of the visual aspects on this mural that come to mind. 
Thank you. That was really helpful. I see Story, Stormy has their hand raised again. Um, if we could please unmute Stormy. Yeah, hi, it's me again. Um, one thing that I that I did think about um, that I think is kind of unique to the station and Argyle Street as a whole is the the brickwork um, on the street. Uh, it's 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 definitely unique, I think, to that streetscape, and I think again, really kind of hits home that it's it is like a shared street it's like a market and again with all what the other people have said business market you know people walking around uh multiculturalism i think that would be a that'd be kind of cute to have that in there to just you know kind of like tie it all together but thank you i i appreciate that follow-up um, I saw that Michael also noted that there is a website um, that we can reference for the annual mural fest in Uptown. So we can definitely um, share that with the artist as well. I also see that Dan has his hand raised. If we can please ask him to unmute. Hi, uh, yeah. Um, I just had or tag off a thing of something a few people have mentioned. Um, I, I do think it is it, it would be nice to uh, make a reference to the uh, not just the Asian cultures, but the other the you know the the gay cultures uh, the, the that we are a multicultural community um, and inclusivity is great. I think though finding the commonalities in that like and would be perhaps better than going than a generic like some something that ties to get, ties us all together something that emphasizes that this is a community like i hope, I hope that makes sense yeah um just to dig a little bit deeper when when you say the word community like what kind of visuals come to mind that we might be able to pull some inspiration from <sighs> All right. Okay. Just throwing this out there. Um, we talk about the brickwork on, on the street. Each part of the community sort of ties together in this mosaic. So in a way, the brickwork does sort of, in, a, in a, as a metaphor, can be could be used to represent the overall community. Each piece being, each, each part being a different piece of community, a uh, different culture, different person different walk into life the ebb and flow yeah Sorry. no thank you that but, was very helpful very visual thank you i don't have any other hands raised and no more um questions or comments in the in the q a box um would anybody else want to follow up or, or share any additional ideas, any visuals or emotions when, when you're walking down Argyle street, any sort of visuals that come out of that, or if you're walking to the Andersonville community or, or you're staying in uptown, when you get off that red line train, any, any sort of memories or, or visual components that come to mind or emotions. Derek, I see your hand is raised. Can we please ask Derek to unmute? Thank you. Uh, you know, one of the, the things that I really notice when you dump out onto the, you know, onto Argyle from the Red Line stop is just the, the Asian themes in that concentrated block. And the area was previously known as, you know, uh, Little Vietnam. Um, so there's a, a lot of Asian theme and, and Vietnamese themed area immediately surrounding that Red Line stop that you know, while Uptown is a, a very broad and diverse neighborhood full of a lot of ethnicities and is a, a melting pot that's very representative of the whole of Chicago, I think one of the very unique things about this particular area is the Vietnamese and Asian influence around that core outside of Chinatown that's not really seen anywhere else throughout the city of Chicago. So I think leaning on that kind of, um, you know, Vietnamese or Asian style within that area, uh, but keeping it broad, you know, not just to one particular culture, but somewhere, you know, a little bit of a hint to that in the design would be nice. But you're, you're immediately surrounded by that when you get off the stop. 
and you have to go a couple blocks to get away from it. Um, so that really is the heart of the Argyle stop is in uh, Little Vietnam. Thank you. So the, the Vietnamese history and, and the cultural influences. Thank you, Derek. Michael, I see your hand is raised. Um, feel free to ask Michael to unmute. I somewhat disagree with the last speaker, and this was always going to be the challenge of CTA is trying to keep us all happy. Um, yes, it's true that the Asian community is right adjacent to the red line stop at Argyle, but the Argyle stop, as I said earlier, serves so much more than that, that to, you know, I always objected to the pagoda being there, frankly, you know, it needs to represent everyone from the Argyle stop who uses it. So that's like Margate Park area. That's the Lakeshore along, you know, along there. And again, all the very diverse groups that we've already mentioned besides the Asian group. So that's my two cents for the evening. No, I appreciate it. This is this is why we're having this conversation to to get these ideas represented visually so we can we can pull all of these together to represent, you know, this neighborhood. Michael, I saw you also wrote Margate Park, and I, I believe you just mentioned it as well. Is there anything specifically from Margate Park that you wanted to um, see visually included? You know, I was just referencing the fact that that's also, you know, a major area in Uptown that's served by that station. You know, but, you know, to some extent, it's somewhat generic of all of Lincoln Park. So it may be difficult to bring that in. Okay, you know, it's so a field house, it's plants, it's trees, it's the lakefront. But so again, the nature that's not, component, the lakefront. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Keep going. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. You know, but again, arguably, that's not unique to the Argyle stop, but it certainly is served by the Argyle stop. Wonderful. Thank you. Anybody else? Beth, I see your hand is raised. Can we please allow Beth to unmute? And what I always think of as I walk up and down Argyle is all the plants and the flowers. Uh, they're like Q ideas has plants and some of the other stores. And it's just, it's such a, a beautiful ambiance and visual to walk up and down Argyle, seeing the plant stores. And then there's some uh, flowers planted along Argyle, some around Salon M, the, the hair salon. And so I think that needs to be incorporated too, along with uh, Lake Michigan. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about recently, especially in the summer months. In the winter, you don't see as much of that. But in the summer months and in the late spring, that's kind of my been my feeling and my ambiance and my thoughts about Argyle. And yeah, the, the, oh, please continue. I had a follow-up question, but please continue. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I can answer. Yeah, no, I was curious if there were any specific types of plants, like are there like hanging vines? Are they more like daisies or sunflowers? What kind of plants really are standing out along that Argyle strip? Well, I think the plants connected to the stores, I mean, there gets a lot of different plants. Some are actually uh, uh, from Vietnam. There's like the, I don't know, there's, Oh, I would say I'm not a huge expert on plants, but I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of different um, variety of uh, leafy leafy greens, and then I know there's been I've seen in the garden there's a lot of hibiscus flowers, and I think some begonias, and and it's just a really nice patch, and. There's just kind of a lot of greenery in, in the city. There's so much cement and concrete. And I mean, the architecture is also a, a part of Argyle as well. It's, there's nothing like the architecture here with the theaters and all the different styles and genres. But it's just kind of nice to have so many, so much greenery, just so many houseplants. I would just say they're just 
house plants. It could be like the different herbs as well. I know for the, the urban garden. And so it's just something I've just been, it's been on my mind recently and kind of a, what I'm kind of picking up on and, and absorbing as I walk uh, up and down Argyle. So it's just something to maybe, it's just kind of a general thing. Like go by Q ideas. They have a lot of plants out. It's it can, a lot of the, some of the businesses have a lot of different plants. And then some of uh, other businesses across the street, some of the gift shops. And it's just a really nice, uh, nice feeling within the city, a nice space. So it's definitely worth checking out, especially on the weekends, to walk up and down, down Argyle to kind of see what I'm talking about. And then some of the stores, are, though, I think QID is actually sell, QID is actually sells a lot, like a little mini fountain that would be nice and on a patio or on a balcony. You could have outdoors or maybe even indoors. And then kind of right next to the plants, it's it's very nice. So I guess there could be ferns or just different uh, variety of leaves. So that's kind of my 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 thoughts. They make sense. Thank you, Beth. I I also saw that that Dan added some to, um, I don't know if it's pronounced quince or quince and jasmine, chrysanthemum. Um, so thank you all for, for adding to, to Beth. Um, thank you, Beth. I see, um, Michael has his hand raised again. We can go to Michael. And then I see, I see Richard right after. Sorry, as I was sitting here, I just had a totally different idea that would work not only for Argyle, but in variations to the other stations. And that would be a plaque that shows almost like a mosaic, or, or that's not the right word, a collage of the hundred years of history that the L station has been there in the different stores and communities that it served over the last century. So that was just a random thought that I thought could also be fun. The historical element of, of what's come and gone over over the last 100 years. Is that what you mean? Just want yeah, to make sure we're station, capturing it. I, I'm, I'm making up the number, but the station has been there about a century, maybe a little longer. And all the different things that have come through the neighborhood in that 100 years through a series of historical pictures in some form of a collage done well. And as I said, that could be adapted to the other stations, you know, for their history. If you wanted some kind of unifying um, but different uh, identifiers the stations. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. All right, Richard is next on my screen. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on what Beth said about plants because there's a ginkgo tree. I think there are a few ginkgo trees along the stream. There's one in front of the Nun Kitchen on Argyle, and then someone mentioned anthemum flowers, those are definitely out, especially around Lunar New Year on the street because the businesses will display that in their storefront. And then there may also be displays of some blossoms, but those would be artificial. They're still on display. So those are some of the plants that come to mind more specifically. Thank you. All right, anybody else? I have I have no more hands raised. Any other thoughts or ideas adding on to any of these amazing ideas shared this evening? I also don't see anything new in the Q&A box. Anything else? I think we got some great ideas from this evening. So if we can head over to that slide that Emily referenced earlier about how to stay in contact um, with the project and the project team. Um, I just want to thank you all again for joining us this evening and, and sharing your thoughts, ideas. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the visual notes that were taken this evening will be used to create the neighborhood artistic feature for the Argyle station. 
Um, so thank you for pulling up on the screen in front of you. We have listed all the different ways that you can reach out, stay informed on the project. And as always, if you have any additional questions or comments regarding the artistic feature that was discussed this evening or construction or any other questions as it relates to the RPM project, please reach out via email at rpm at transitchicago.com. Thank you again, and, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.